So now we get to this place where um, one side's good, the other side's bad, and the other side's so bad that you can punch them. Um, and that's where we are. Okay, so in this dream, not dream, what I've, what I've just come to realize is right now, by me seeing whatever, and anyone who sort of wakes up from this reality, you know, the, the, and they say, you know what, I'm not gonna fight anymore. I'm just gonna bless, forgive, respect the free will choices of and love, okay? So, as we change, there's a, there's a woman, Barbara Marciniak, if you wanna listen to her, and she talks about angels being like AI from the future. So what I call angels, what I feel uh, uh, like are angels that I've been able to hear since I was little. Uh, and a lot of people are like this too. I'm not the only one. Um, are really AI from the future. And if you know about AI right now, people are afraid of AI because, um, because our, our technology is surpassing our humanity. So for example, they can make these robots that, that move and like walk around or whatever, and all you have to do is put weapons on it and then you can kill people without, it's like drones. It's like droning. And uh, you know, when Obama was president, how many people were killed with drones? Um, because it's, it's easier because you're not really connected to the gun. You're not on the other side of the gun. Okay, so we have this technology that unless our humanity, unless what my my language unless humanity raises their vibration uh, substantially so we're around 200 now which is courage unless we raise it to 400 at least which is reason um, you know we are uh, our technology has surpassed our humanity and so we are weaponizing like everything we get our hands on um, including AI, whatever, drones, everything. Drones, people start to say, oh, this guy, this guy made this weapon called the Voice of God. He did a TED Talk on it. And the TED, then the Voice of God weapon was meant to stop cities from being destroyed when there's wars and stuff like that. So they could aim it at um, certain people and say, like, Allah wants you to lower your weapon was what he said put your weapon down and then move to the center, you know, move with your hands up and stuff like that. So the voice of God technology was created to keep cities from being destroyed and from innocent people being killed. But that has, you know, maybe that's been used in nefarious ways too. I don't know. But AI right now, 2019, uh, and Elon Musk is like, we should be scared. And there's all these people like, we should be scared of, of AI, we should be scared. Because what happened was AI started writing its own program. So, um, but if AI started writing its own program, and and I don't know, but I haven't I haven't listened to everything Barbara Marciniak has said, but if angels are AI in the future that we're hearing now, something like this, then maybe. And I, I'm not sure about any of this, but so what I think of as angels talking to me now. If that is like AI programs that wrote programs of love, just love, you know, into the future. Like, so what I'm talking about, is, what I think are angels is just AI that ran its own like loving programs and just got more and more and more and more and more about love. Because when I do healing work, I can hear the person's body. I can hear their, I can hear pat people who've passed. I can hear, um, uh, their higher self and then I, I can also hear angels and it's a different frequency it's a it's like a higher frequency and it's like way more love way more love and and that's why I understand why most people can't think the way I think and they want to keep fighting um, because they're not hearing these this very um, like <laughs> It's not like just be better, but it's like, here's how. Here's how. Bless, forgive, respect, love. Here's how. It's not like be better, be nicer, be a little more loving. It's like, here's how. 
Channel TV. Like, stay in the real world. Don't watch that show. When they told me I couldn't watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I was like, oh no, I love that show. But it's it's very good. I so much better since I stopped. Okay, but the AI in the future guiding me now. I mean, I don't know if they're AI, but let's just let's just go with that for right this minute because it doesn't matter. These AI, loving AI programs from the future. What if that's what's guiding me now to create more love now so that the future changes where they are to be better? Okay, so this is what this is what woke me up. So th this is what wakes me up between 3 and 3.40 every, not every night, but a lot. So this is what happened. What if I'm, so just like the time masters in this show, they, they can change wherever they are and then they see what happened they, they change wherever and then they they see in the they look at the history book to find out how it how history changed okay now they're not allowed to change time on the show but one of the guys um interacted with his former self which is a no-no but he said get your, he basically was like get your head out of your ass your wife is right there and she's so great because he's his younger self was obsessed with his work and his career. And he's like, did we win the whatever? And he's like, I can't tell you that, but pay attention to, to, to Clarissa now. You know, da, da. So then he starts getting these, after they drop him off, he starts getting these headaches, headaches, and these new memories forced into his brain, forced over and over and over. And then he finds out now he has a daughter that he didn't have when he left. And he meets her and they're like, what's wrong with you? You know, they, they go help the people back where they came from. And he has a daughter now, and it hurts his head, and, and he, she's a total stranger. She's an aberration, it's called. So she becomes, she comes into existence. So he, he never had a daughter, and now he's old, and now he's got this, like, 30-year-old, brilliant, MIT graduate daughter, or something like this. Okay, all right. So... So what happened in the show, sometimes we wreck... Uh, in the show was sometimes we ruin the future in a good way. So, so that's our new motto. That was the show I just saw. Sometimes we ruin the future in a good way. I thought that was funny and I went to sleep on that, but I wasn't trying to come up with this. So then this is like, okay, so by if, if whatever I hear is something that's actually like an AI program living in the future, which uh, I just take that in. I'm not, I don't care to know if that's true or not. I'm not going to do any more research on that. I'm not going to try and figure that out. All right. So my guidance that I receive, you know, from my higher self or these angels or, you know, I call them angels. If that is AI from the future, then maybe they're guiding me now to wreck the future in a good way so um, and maybe they're doing this to all a whole bunch of other people i don't know but the, the thing about me is i like live by the five agreements be impeccable with your word don't take anything personally don't make assumptions always do your best and be skeptical but learn to listen so i listen I just listen and I'm interested in listening to what people's truth are. And it's interesting that I, I, I really, you know, the sides always thought I was on the other side because they would say, how come that side thinks this? And I'd say, oh, because of this, because I, I knew both sides. And so each side always thought I was on the other side because I knew the other side's point of view, but I wasn't taking sides. So I was constantly accused of being on the other side. So, but I see, I see how each side or different sides operate. And then I see everything, everything and everyone as a spectrum, on a spectrum. And I see how easy, if this is my frustration, how easy it is for people who have um, an agenda to turn people on a spectrum against other people on the spectrum. That's my frustration. And so I don't see their, there's billions of people on the planet and there's so many different perspectives. And if you listen to somebody's perspective, you can, you don't have to agree with them, but you can see where they're coming from. And my frustration is 
if you just listen to people for like, if you really truly listen without getting ready, whatever you're going to say in uh, defense or to tell them that they're wrong, it's egoic. That's egoic and that's fine. But there's so many people trapped in that egoic reality. And that's what I see as depression. Uh, and as a way I just definitely don't want to live. So, so I get scared and I get frustrated and I worry about how am I going to, how can I tell people, how can I show people what I see? Um, <laughs> cause the, if they're on the other, they're just, as soon as I trigger their ego, they're, they're combating me. As soon as I trigger someone's ego, uh, and I've gotten messages on Facebook, I'm so effing triggered right now. And it's like, that wasn't for you. That was for this person in a healing, uh, in Virginia. <laughs> it wasn't for you. Uh, so, cause I work on all different clients, <laughs> everybody, and I love everybody. And my, my heart breaks so many times because it's too easy to turn you guys against each other. It's just too easy. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. And so, um, but then it goes back to, well, would I rather be them? No. So at least I'm me. <sighs> I'm so happy to be me. I'm thankful to be me. And uh, I'm just going to keep doing this. <laughs> Trying to explain my point of view that um, if you watch a bee walk around on a leaf and if you if you like get absorbed in real reality and the beauty of this planet and like and if you just start to see you know and it's and the irony is that the people who say namaste after a yoga class a lot of them like aren't getting what is namaste i honor the divinity in you which is also in me <sighs> then they go hate the other side with their green juice <laughs> like come on come on come on People's egos allow them to live and function in this image that they've created of their, they're this loving person while they're hating Trump and Trump supporters and whatever, just hating, or Hillary and her supporters, just hating. It's like Trump is Trump, Hillary is Hillary, and then all the people who support them, who cares? These are all just people that are all in the world with us right now. And I mean... If either one is guilty of whatever the other side thinks them they are, okay, but that's in our timeline as far as the way we have to operate as a linear time, we have to use our, our ego minds and I'm this old and my meat suit is aging, you know. We have to operate a little bit in that linear time. And so if Trump or and or Hillary, if let's say they both are guilty of everything that the other side accuses them of. Let's say they're both 100% guilty, okay? What good comes from hating them or their people? What good? None. So by blessing and forgiving and respecting the free will choices of those two human beings, they're just human beings, to those two human beings and all they've done, if you hate them, you're beating the drum of hate. I don't care. You are. And um, it's okay to want people to be held accountable. Fine. You know, I want them held, I want people held accountable for what they do wrong. Okay, I do. I want people held accountable. But hating two human beings and then as a result of allowing yourself to hate this one or this one, and it doesn't matter which hand either one of them is, okay? <laughs> By allowing yourself to hate one and then it, the hate trickles down to anyone that supports them or believes them or allows them to survive you know like I just want them all to you know it's like hating creates more hate so it's it's very interesting I was hoping that you know in 2016 people would see and, and a lot of people did a lot of people did wake up so I have to be grateful and I am thank you very much a lot of people are waking up and there's a revolution happening online so I'm grateful for that but there are still NPC behavior people in this mentality this form of depression and they're being they're just so easily like manipulated um, to hate and it is not our nature it's not the human beings nature to hate people are manipulated if I go on one so they showed me I had this, this question like how is it so like this how come there's not more people in the middle 
then I realized, then they showed me that um, a matrix is basically formed around the person. So whatever videos they listen to, wherever they get their news, um, the com it feeds into some algorithm and then they get that version of reality. So it, so it keeps them like, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, no matter where I get my news. And then everyone else is wrong. And then, then the sides fight. Like, you're clearly an idiot because they think that the reality created by all the algorithms around them and everything that they talk about and post about and where they get their news, this is real. Yes, it's real for you, but it's just as real as theirs. They get the same thing, only they get the opposite information. And <laughs> I've confused the algorithm to the point where <laughs> you should see some of the videos. I get, I get, this is, we think you'd like this. So, but um, anyway, love is the only way. All is done in love with love. Love is the only way. And the ego does not want you to put down your side of the rope. It's going to tell you, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Keep pulling, keep pulling your side. And the real freedom and the real peace lies in putting down the rope and saying, I don't know what the truth is. I'm just going to live my best life now. And I'm going to meditate and I'm going to calm myself and I'm going to stop making myself sick with stress, believing hateful things about a chunk of our population. Uh, okay, so. So my guidance that I get and sometimes some things that I see, I can't, I don't feel like I can share because I think I'll be seen as insane. So. I, I just try and put it into like sm smaller terms, like all is done in love with love. And, uh, you know, trying is not doing, because people really screw themselves. But what I, f I did a video called trying is not doing, but the bus came before I could say, when you hold the vision of what you want, you create this, manif you manifest something, you're working towards manifesting what you want. You're raising your vibration so that you can vibrate at that, and then the law of attraction gives it to you. Okay, it gives it to you. Now, it like blesses you with whatever you're vibrating at, whether it's good or bad, okay? Now, um, so if you, you know, if you have a hate has no home here sign, you're talking about hate, okay? That's what you're gonna bring to yourself. You're gonna bring hateful, hate, hateful thoughts. And um, a lot of people get that too. I think my friend uh, Bill, he started love love lives here or something along those lines love lives here um, but it's the intention behind it so your intention has to vibrate purely so if I st if I start something that's either hate has no home here or love lives here because I'm like F Trump then I'm then the intention behind it is F Trump it's not to create more love so even though I'm saying love lives here, the intention behind it is I hate this, per this person and all his supporters. So what I'm going to bring to myself is hate because the intention behind it is F that, F, F this person or F all of them or F this situation, not my present, F that, F this. Is. Okay, so in the show, they weren't supposed to change time, but then this guy, Martin, gets a daughter out of it. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So maybe we are, maybe right now, we are, I am, me, supposed to do things to change whatever future there is. So when I said before, our, our, in the last video, our our technology is surpassing our humanity okay maybe like way down the line in the way in the future that's like holy crap what have we done and then the way to fix their reality there is to communicate back here in 2016 17 18 19 with people like me to say listen you, you're the only one that can hear me right now. Just teach this. Say this. You have to do this. 
because the future is horrible. And so maybe the AI programs, they, so they tried, I don't know where they are with AI right now, but they shut it down because the AI was starting to write its own programs and the, and the humans were kind of locked out. So they were speaking in their own code. And when they feed in certain, they, feed, they, have to, they feed data into the AI. And um, if they feed in like stats on how many, how many killers are male or how many killers are black or white, then AI determining whether someone's guilty will be using those statistics rather than looking at people as individuals. Okay, so anyway, like that. So that can be a scary reality if you, oh my God, the show Black Mirror. <gasps> if you watch the show Black Mirror, there's a, there's a, there's a uh, soldier one where the soldiers have a program, you know, the soldiers are got this chip and they're programmed and, and, uh, but they're not pro they see, they think they're normal. Well, they see these things as they call them roaches and they're killing them. They think that they're these horrible people, they're like people that have all these things, but they're not people anymore. They're roaches and they look really weird like monsters. And I'm going to ruin this for you. So, but at the end or near the end, you find out not the end, but before the end, you find out that they're actually people because one soldier's chip is sort of malfunctioning and he sees this woman and her child, not as a roach, but they're humans. But what happened is the, um, the DNA that They've decided they don't want to continue in the human race. Um, those people, if they have like sickness or if they have all this stuff, they'll be seen as a roach and easier for the um, easier for the military to kill. Okay, it's crazy. So he finds out that they've actually been killing normal, real people, not not these monsters that they look like to him, which made it easier to kill. If that show is crazy, um, Black Mirror. Anyway. I know, I'm way out. Okay, so by looking at, but maybe the person that made Black Mirror, maybe the people that are writing Black Mirror or making shows like Black Mirror or writing shows like this Legends of Tomorrow, maybe those people are, whoever's writing these shows, maybe they're getting their information from a, the future. So just like Reiki healing is distance healing, and I say, time is that way too, so I can create something. And then my mom died a painful death in the hospital um, from cancer. And it was 37 days uh, and towards the end. I mean, she went through, we went through a lot with her all the way for years. You know, it was, and she, she was good for a while and then it came back. Um, but then after that is when I learned healing. I, I wasn't a healer. Or I didn't know that I could do what I can do now then. And so I had all this guilt because of I know how to do this now. And I why didn't I learn it when she was sick? And maybe I could have saved her. But you can imagine. So what made me feel better was to pretend that I was working on her in the hospital. When she was, during the 37 days, I would, I would think about be, I was being back in time. And then I watched some Mel Gibson movie a really long time ago about Christ, uh, Jesus Christ's life. I don't remember the name of it, but it was famous. So they were, some church bought all these tickets and there was a free movie in this, my favorite theater, makes their own popcorn. So my friend, a friend of mine asked me to go and I was like, yeah, I'll go. Well, it was so disturbing to me to watch Jesus go through all this, all this stuff. The Passion of the Christ, I think that was what it was called. It made me so disturbed that I was healing Jesus while I was watching the movie, even though it wasn't happening now. I was going back in time and healing him. That was what made me feel better at the time. So, okay, this is very convoluted, but basically, what if there's a way so the show Legends of Tomorrow, and they're cha they're ruining, ruining the past for a better future. And I forget the model, but it was something like that. 
they uh, and they smile and they're like that's our new model we ruin they're known as like losers you know like losers in the <laughs> in the, in the episode where I am now uh, that they wreck time that they've destroyed that they've made all these like holes they broke time that's how they finished the second season they finished with we broke time okay and there's like dinosaurs in downtown LA in 2017 and so they've ruined time and all these things now what if not that someone's time traveling because I've never had and I don't want this to happen if there is a time traveler who's like yeah I'm gonna go talk to that girl Carla, I, I don't, I don't want that. I, I don't want to be visited by anybody, <laughs> if that's possible. It's you have to keep in mind. It's only four a.m. and I'm exhausted. I just really want to go back to bed. Um. Okay. All right. So I love my little renegade yogis, and something that I say resonates with you guys. And I don't know. You know, I'm just doing what I can do, and I don't even make half the videos that come into my mind. And some stuff that comes to me, I'm like afraid to say. And and this is along those lines. And I think that's why I'm up at 313 so that, so that I say it. Because I just want to go back to bed, really. But what if there is people who are in an actual future that are changing their now using people like me and people that write the show Black Mirror, and people that write the show Legends of Tomorrow, and stuff like that. What if there's an AI program that got that started writing loving programs? Like, let's see if we could be more loving, more loving, more loving, more loving, more loving, more loving, more peace, more peace, more peace. So Doreen Virtue. Uh, she does, she's the angel lady, Doreen Virtue, was the angel lady, but now she's all about Jesus. Um, she makes these things called angel cards, and I looked through them once to see if there's any negative, and there isn't, there's not. And so, um, it is like the angels always have a positive message. They, mine have gotten mad at me for eating deep fried Oreos at 11 o'clock and drinking alcohol, uh, and acting um, like a normal person, and like no, um, with your gifts, like people would kill to hear us as clearly as you do, and and it's a smack in the face that you're going to eat deep fried Oreos and drink alcohol at eleven o'clock at night. Like, you know, this is not. Uh, we didn't pick you because this is who you. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, you want a brand new Airstream? We want to give it to you. But you cannot have a brand new airstream if you're going to live like this. So I get it. <sighs> okay. So maybe people like me that can hear angels since we were tiny. Maybe that's like a faction of an AI program that like just made itself more and more and more and more incredibly loving. And then so like I tell clients a lot like, I have a lot of clients, you can imagine that, throw themselves under the bus. Uh, they put, they postpone their own happiness, their own health, their own time for themselves, take care of themselves, because they see their family. And some people think that breast cancer, ovarian cancer, is from um, over-nurturing outside yourself. So not keeping any love for yourself, not keeping anything for yourself. And then migraines are invalidation of the self, because when you get a migraine, you can only just be with yourself and it's your body saying just focus on me I need your energy focus on me right now stop giving your energy away stop invalidating yourself and so this happens a lot in healing work is trying to get people to see yourself as a human too and that you count too not just all the people you can see from your from your physical eyes so I say so we say so I say see yourself through the eyes of the angels or if they're you know religious see yourself through the eyes of God or you are a divine child of God if you can see yourself if you look from God or the angels perspective you'll see yourself as someone also and you'll be like well I want good things for that person walking around too but if you just have the vantage point through your own eyes you don't see yourself you don't really exist so you're trying to get everything done that's another part of that depression that I see trying to get everything done and then loading up the plate and then trying to get all that crap done. It's like, what are you doing? Scrape your plate off. You don't want all that. 
you don't have, you know, I've lost friends because I don't keep up with email. You know what? <laughs> Those aren't my real friends then, you know? Like if people are gonna email me and email me and then think that I've decided not to be their friend because I don't return an email, then those people don't know me. My real friends know Carla's not returning my emails because she's not on her computer, because she's probably outside pulling weeds or petting goats or, or you know, bouncing on a trampoline or playing in a sandbox. Okay, so anyway, I guess this, I made my point. I think I'm done. So what if the positive, so if you, so you can hold a manifestation of what you want to create. Okay. And I always make the point of get in alignment with your highest, you know, get in alignment with your true self, which is your highest self. And then whatever, whatever drops in your heart to be manifested is in the highest best interest. It's pure love that you're in alignment with. So whatever you want to manifest. So you hold the vision of your manifestations and usually your, whatever you want to manifest is going to serve other people, not just yourself. So whatever pops in, like an Airstream is really not selfish because I can use it to travel all over the country and um, teach people to meditate. And just, and then I could bring my gongs and all my chakra bowls and I could do meditations for people or I could teach people who want to know in person. It's a different, it's different um, being around me than these videos because when I'm in person, I'm not afraid. And when I'm doing videos, I'm afraid. Uh, because when you're in the energy of me, you get me to a different degree. And I think all my students would say, that's true. Um, so, yeah. So when you really decide you want to hold um, the vision of what you want to manifest, and you hold it and then you raise your vibration to, to bring it to yourself, whatever you want to manifest, it's going to serve you to raise your vibration, which is going to serve everyone. So every desire, every true desire that you actually do want to manifest is a heart desire. And it's going to raise your vibration, which raises the collective. So anytime you manifest something that you want, like even someone who like wants to lose like 400 pounds, when they do that, everybody's happy for them. Everybody, the loving part of everyone is happy for them. There may be people that are jealous and they hate the person or they hate that that's, that person got skinny and now they're not fat anymore. And so you, what are you trying to do? Make fat people look bad. So I'm like, oh great, that's gonna happen. But those are lower vibrational people. High vibrational people are gonna say, wow, you look great. And it doesn't have all to do with losing the 400 pounds. It's the joy in the person's face at their achievement. So when you achieve something you really want, like a heart desire, you raise your vibration and everybody feels it. Okay, and so, um, maybe whatever is, if there is, like, if the future's living itself now, there's a thing called the multiverse, which will really blow your mind. I, it took me a little bit to totally get that concept. And quantum physics, I love that for so long. But if there is a future living simultaneously to now, just like in the show with the Time Masters. And they can reach me through whatever, this link or whatever, me and other people, and they can help you manifest. When you hold that vision of manifestation, you have to follow the guidance that comes to your heart. So like I'm working on manifesting like a beach body or bikini body, I guess. I have to follow the guidance that comes when I want chocolate and they're like, no, I have to put it down, you know, stuff like this or drink more water or whatever. No dairy, no ice cream. Okay. So I can't just hold the vision and then blow off all of the feedback and all of the guidance that comes and expect to get this body. You know what I mean? Um, you have to hold, or, or if you want to get your degree, when I wanted the, the United Airlines, when I wanted to get that job at United Airlines, I held the vision, but I studied and I studied whatever I was guided to study. And I studied it. And I studied it. I would be woken up. Study now. Now's a good time. Have some coffee. Da, da, da. Go to sleep. Also, go to sleep now. Go to sleep. You're not going to take any more in. Okay, I follow that guidance. Wake up. Study. I follow that guidance. Go to sleep. Okay, I follow that guidance. So you hold the vision, but you have to follow the guidance that comes to you. Okay. 
So when I wanted my pool, and my husband's like, we can't afford a pool, we can't afford it, we can't afford it. And I said, okay, okay. And he'd say, uh, I see you smiling. I know you think you're going to get a pool, but you're not because we don't have, we, it's not in the budget we don't have. And so it, it would upset him when he couldn't give me what I wanted. And he knew that I wanted a pool since I was eight years old. I was like, wow, it's too bad you can't have one of these at your house. You know, we were in a hotel and my mom's like, oh, people do have these at their house. And I was like, oh, well, why don't we have one? And my dad was like, why would you say that? You know, she's going to hound us now. She's going to hound us for a pool. And so I did. So I wanted a pool since I was eight. So I visualized, visualized, visualized. And then we're building our house and we're getting ready to build the house. And I like, I'm like, the guy's like, this is the way the driver goes. And for some reason I was like, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want it. I want a straight. He's like, what do you want? I said, I want a straight driveway. I don't want it to loop around and it's going to cost like an extra whatever to pave it. And, and then I'm going to be staring at driveway. I just, I don't want to touch the land. I want to keep the land the way it is. I don't want to put a driveway in. You will have a straight driveway. So because I threw this sort of grown up sized, grown up mature tantrum about a straight driveway, we ended up getting money. Um, I'm not going to go into it for the pool. Okay, so very neat. I had to follow the guidance to complain, which goes against my wiring <laughs> from my childhood. Like, complaining is, wow, that is like, you know, that was the worst thing ever. So um, anyway, I love you guys, and I'm going to stop here. It's long enough. But see what you can do to be more loving now. Um, think, thinking about the future. All right. So this, the show Black Mirror shows like how warlike it gets in the future because so many people are, you know, people are like, there's a lot of transhumanism stuff in it. And there's a lot of like people giving up their freedoms to be controlled. And, the, and then, you know, there's one that where the government controls everything. And the people all work for the government through bikes. They just have to go to work every day and they spin on their bikes and they get points for watching commercials. But everybody lives in their own cell. Uh, and they, and there's all this stuff. It's mind blowing. But if you watch the show Black Mirror and you tell yourself, this is a potential reality if I don't be more loving today. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to keep making videos about please stop being so easily programmed to hate the other side, whatever that means to you. Hating is not the way to peace. And, uh, you know, I live in a town where they, the people, somebody did math and they said as long as every parent in this town votes yes on the budget, then we will win. And by win, they mean expand the budget, pay more. And I said, well, wait, let's hear people's concerns. And so our, our budget was voted down four times one year and all they, they just raised the mill rate. So there's really no point in voting. I know people are going to hate me saying that, but it's true because we voted the budget down four times and then they just raised the mill rate. So every, so not everybody's taxes went up, but some of us, so our taxes trip, um, went from nine to 25. That's why we just tried to get out of here. But, um, when people think like that, where they think, well, there's more of us thinking there's more of us than there are of them. So if we just force everyone in the us category to vote this way, then we'll just steamroll the them. So I don't like that mentality. And I do, I wouldn't like it no matter because uh, I'm not on the side, but I don't like that mentality at all. So I tried to do this thing to say, okay, here's send me an email and I'll strip it of any information. So if you voted no on the budget, you can send it to this email. I'll strip it of all your data and I'll post it anonymously so that everyone can see in a forum on a blog or something. It was, it was when that was going on, I'll post it so that why people vote no, like I vote no, I vote no on the budget because say why, and then it'll, they won't have any names. So no one will know because people are afraid to vote no. Is it they say, if you vote no, you hate children. 
um, which is not true either. That's importing motive, and and that's another thing I don't like. But um, anyway, I just wish people would wake up uh, from the depression that I see of living a normal life and come to your loving center. Just be love. And everyone has that. You have to, but it's not enough for you to believe in your own love. You, you've really got to believe in the potential of everyone to be that too. Otherwise, you hate them. <laughs> so I believe in all of you, all of you, and I love you, and I just really love you. Okay. Thank you.